guys, how's it going? Welcome to the first official Matthew Lynn vlog. I'm very happy to have you guys here. Today, we are exploring the world of green zucchini squash. <gasps> now, green zucchini squash, guys, has been being consumed by humans for over 7,000 years. Apparently, it originates in Central and South America, uh, where it was actually a different ancestor to the plant we know today. Later on, this plant was brought back to Europe, brought to Italy, where they engineered it, I don't know, to be the plant that it is now. And then this bad boy, these babies, were brought back to North America in the early 1900s. Who knew? So a little history about the plant, guys. Um, let's get a little closer. Let's learn more about it, shall we? Zucchinis, um, particularly the green, are annuals. So that means they're not gonna grow year after year, guys. At the end of their season, these guys are gonna die back. Harvesting them is gonna do a number to them, and you're gonna wanna replant next season. Typically, they only live through the summer and the beginning of the fall, uh, anywhere from around 40 to 60 days or so. And in that time, in just those two months, guys, one plant like this can actually get to be 10 plus square feet. So they're a very large plant. They also produce, uh, in a single season, up to 10 plus pounds of fruit. Uh, vegetable, haha, <laughs> they call it fruit though. So it's huge bearing, guys, bears a lot. Uh, each fruit, you're looking at anywhere from six to 12 inches long, guys, up to a foot long per fruit. Because of the size and the high yield on these guys, generally, it's good to only have one or two of these green zucchinis in your garden. Now a beautiful thing about squash in general, actually, is squash plants actually um, self-pollinate. So they create male and female flowers. Um, and you can either let nature take its course and the bees will move it from one to the other, the pollen, or you can actually come out and when they're flowering, you can give them just a little shake. Just, just a little shake like that. And uh, these flowers here, will actually shoot the pollen all over the female flowers. Um, so they're a great addition to the garden, super easy, they f grow fast. Now, let's get even closer, and let's take a look at what it would take to prune one of these guys. Yeah. When it comes to sun, these guys absolutely love it. Um, only very light shade would be needed. Uh, they can take pretty, pretty direct sunlight six to ten hours out of the day guys so um, you know as far as desert or hotter climates as long as you can keep them moist they love the sun they can rock it. it brings me to my next point there is how much do you water it as you can see some of this dirt here uh, it is it is rather moist I just watered this morning, guys, and I probably won't water again until tomorrow, maybe late afternoon, even the next day morning. So they do enjoy a lot of water as long as the ground can filter it. As long as the water can drain out, um, these guys will be great. They like moist, but they don't like mud. As far as nutrients, guys, um, fertilizing is not really needed with green zucchini. So assuming that you use pretty good soil to start out with, um, you can let them go through their whole season and they won't really need any extra love in the nutrient department. If you're a person who insists, if you really want to give them some food, um, any simple 10-10-10 blend of all-purpose nutri nutrients will work on these guys. Uh, they're not real finicky in the food department. As far as pruning a green zucchini, they don't really live long enough to need a lot of pruning. It's not super intensive. But what you do want to do is make sure that the sun is getting distributed across the whole plant. So for instance, here I have one, and you see it has a flower going here, which is great. But what you can't see is underneath this leaf right here, if I move them out of the way, there's another flower down there, guys. So what you'll want to do is remove leaves, just like that. Remove leaves that are obstructing the sun. Okay, that way the whole plant, especially all this nice new growth in the middle here, it can get lots of sunlight. And these will get to be as big as these guys. The other thing that you want to remove is any real small yellowing leaves. Uh, you don't want the plant to put a lot of energy into those. 
You always want to remove it at the base on these guys. But you don't want her to spend a lot of her energy trying to create this leaf into that. It's not doing well. So you want her to focus all her energy on these guys in the middle. So as far as that, pretty easy to prune. The last part here is harvesting. These flowers, they actually become the fruit eventually. And it's super simple, guys. When you're ready to take the fruit off the vine, all you do is you grab on to whichever one you're looking at, and you just give it a nice little twist and pull. And those zucchinis, they'll just pop right off the vine for you. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining me on this green zucchini adventure. Now we know all about them. And we've learned that whether you're cutting them up and frying them in a pan or turning them into a healthy alternative for noodles, uh, green leaf zucchini, they're a great addition to anyone's garden, super easy to grow and give awesome yields. Now, let's take it over to the corner and let's have a little coffee. <sighs> hey there guys, how's it going? I'm back and as you can see, I cleaned myself up for you. Had a lot of fun working in the yard today with you guys, but now it's time for me to tell you all a story. A few days ago, I was out visiting with my parents and I had a lovely time. And while I was with visiting with them, I came across my father and started talking to him. And we had a nice conversation um, and we ended up starting to talk about YouTube and YouTube as a career and of course how his one and only son in the world has decided to try to make YouTube his career. <laughs> My dad, he was explaining that he would love to see me go back to school, um, get a degree, and, you know, learn a skill that I could then use to sell myself to someone who is rich, someone who has money, or a company. Kind of the American dream, I suppose, of his day. We talked a long time about it, and the whole time he was talking to me, he was saying things like, I'm worried, I care about you, I want to see you be successful. And it got me thinking, in my head while he's saying all this, holy shit, this is amazing. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking, holy shit, this is fucking phenomenal. Why? Why was I thinking that? That's crazy. Well, you see guys, in my experience, in my short time here in the world, I've come across a lot of stories of successful people who take a passion of theirs and turn it into a career. But each of those stories that I come across always starts out with a young person who has an idea, an ambition, and that idea kind of goes against the grain of what everyone else is doing. For example, this young person may want to be a star athlete, or they may want to be an artist, or an actor, or even a podcaster. <laughs> because these jobs are so grandiose and so out of the norm, people don't really think that it's possible to do them. I mean, you can't blame them for that, they're kind of right. It's hard to get into your passion, usually. So every one of these young people who are trying to do this go through a period where no one really believes in them. Um, they want the best for them and they love them dearly, but the belief part, the, the I expect this to happen isn't quite there. It's just, they'll believe it when they see it, right? So that made me so proud of myself and of Adam because it just means that we're going along those stepping stones that it takes to get to your success. I don't think there's any way to cheat it, guys. I think that you have to go through this moment of having someone who you love not quite believe that you could really do something for you to really pull it out, get your shit together, and show them that yes, you can do it, and that you will make your dream. A reality. So I wasn't mad or sad or upset with my dad in any way. I loved him for it. I was very appreciative that he was willing to be that stepping stone for me. It was really cool of him, guys. 
I guess wrapping up this whole thing here today, the note that I really want to leave you guys all with, the idea that I want you to chew on before tomorrow's episode, is this. The next time you're in a situation where you find yourself with someone who you look up to or who you love, and you feel like they just don't believe in you for some reason and what you're trying to do, challenge yourself to not be mad and to not resent that person. But instead, try to appreciate them and try to be thankful for the opportunity that they're giving you because they are indeed being your stepping stone. So with that, guys, I'd like to wrap up this first vlog. I had a blast checking out the plants with you guys. I had a blast sipping on some Joe, telling you guys a little story, and I can't wait to do it again in the next one. So. Throw it a like if you enjoyed, comment, I'll comment back. Subscribing helps the whole channel all together. Makes Adam really happy too. And share it with your friends, guys. Much love from Matthew to you guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.